All right, uh, switches are in. Uh, time to try it out. Uh, let's take a look inside here. I think I showed you some uh, of this before. I'll, I'll insert some pictures um, now uh, showing you the insides um, more, more closely in case you're interested in. Uh, there is a couple uh, hybrids that I was curious about and I looked them up. The, uh, the little square hybrid next to the power supply, those big uh, capacitors, that's a hybrid that, uh, that is a clock adjustment. And I'm not exactly sure what it does, but it goes hand in hand with the custom chip to its right um, that uh, does all of the counting and stuff and it corrects some variations of things. So I'm not sure what that does. I don't know if it's a band-aid to that custom chip or whether it's needed. Uh, I don't know why it's there. Anyway, and that's called H1. And then H2 is up front next to the, the um, front panel. And that one is a D to A converter that was homespun. So that's kind of fun. They probably needed something better than they could buy or they could build it cheaper than they could buy it. And uh, that's a, uh, some type of uh, D to A. Anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and try this thing out now that I've got the switches in it. All right, let's power it on. Oh, 1992. That must be the version number or something like that. There we go. We're getting all the numbers. We didn't get all the numbers to begin with. Uh, we're getting all 10 digits, 000. zero, zero. So um, let's go ahead and put something in it. This is uh, from the Rubidium standard. So <laughs> I'm sure this thing's way out of calibration, but let's see if it can measure 10 megahertz. Oh, look at that. That's not too bad. Uh, yeah. 500 hertz off for <laughs> something that's probably been in a trash can for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really cool. Let's see if the uh, uh, trigger, the uh, switches work here on resolution. You can, yeah, see, I can change how many, how many digits of resolution this thing has. And it goes out to 10 digits. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine digits, sort of 10. So let's go one more. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine digits. I thought it was 10 digits. It's nine digits plus the exponent. So that's the total 10 digits. So nine digits. Um, but yeah, we're getting way out here, right? So this is uh, kilohertz. This is hertz. This is tenths of hertz. And this is hertz. Um, right? Hundreds, tenths, maybe hundreds and tenths. Uh, yeah, these are hertz, tenths of hertz, hundreds of hertz. There you go. Um, looks like it's working great. Let's see if the function thing works. Yep, yeah, period A. There's the period. Time interval from A to B, total phase between A and B. That's pretty cool. Here's the check. It should come up with all zeros. Uh, let me run this back down. Yeah, it's a 10 megahertz in turn. It, it looks at itself, so it's always perfect. Uh, but uh, good, good meters always have a check. And then ratio of A to B and, and uh, ratio of C to B. Let's see now the C. The C starts at, uh, the C input here starts at 40, 40 megahertz. So let's see if we can't get some higher value here. And it should go up to 1.3 gigahertz. So let's try that out. We're running over some, <laughs> running over some packing bubbles. All right, while my generator is warming up, let's move the BNC to the C channel. C channel should go from 40 megahertz to 1300 megahertz. So let's give that a try. And we need to change it to the C channel. We're still on check. Uh, let's see, C channel. It's up at the top here. All right, C channel. And that should be 100 megahertz. And oh, there we go. Very nice. So measuring 100 megahertz. Let's go to a gigahertz. There we go, one gigahertz. So that's working to treat. Um, that's great. So I think it all works just fine now. I think the only thing that was wrong with this thing was that it was rusty and dirty. Um, the front panel cleaned up really nice because it's a Lexan overlay and all of the printing is on the on the back side, not the front side. So I could really scrub it good with, uh, started out with Gooby Gone and then uh, went over it with alcohol. Um, got that all clean, took a while. And then the rusty parts, I uh, 
put on a wire wheel. I cleaned up all of the front panel stuff on a wire wheel too. Um, and it's looking pretty good now. Uh, I think it'll be great. We'll put the little, put the little switches on and I think it'll be ready to go. Let's try one point. Oh, this generator only goes up to one gigahertz. I can't go any higher. So there we go. One gigahertz. Let's try something fun. Uh, one, two, three dot four, five, six megahertz. There we go, four, five, zero. So we'll have to calibrate this thing after the uh, the oven warms up for a while. I'm sure it'll be nice and stable. It's looking good. Now, instead of turning this thing off with the power button, that will that will cool off the oven. I'm going to hit the uh, standby charge, and uh, the oven should still be on, but the rest of the circuit has been turned off. If I if if that I'm assuming that's the way that it works. You just only you only use this button. Um, I don't have the, um, the the HPIB card or GPIB card in it yet. Um, I'll put that in later. <laughs> 